Hello and welcome to yet another Glass of Bubbly video and this time we've got some kind of fizz and sea delights thanks to Petrosian who sent us an amazing smoked salmon, yeah. some crab and also we've got some smoked pike roe. So we're really looking forward to this but also we've got three amazing bottles of fizz here. Do you want to introduce them? Yeah, we have... We have um... Celebrity and Co. Champagne from Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, exactly. That's where they, they, they sell that over in Taiwan. Very popular. We have uh, Motzenbacher Riesling we from have Riesling. Germany. And then we have Feneroli Brut 12 from Italy. So that's the 2017 vintage that yes. one that we've got there. Okay, so let's get popping i think is a good start yep. i like to start with the rising now when we did a bit of research about these foods it does suggest like with wines and obviously we're doing sparkling wines but a white wine primarily a rising blonde blanc chardonnay so literally we've gone with the rising here first as that is what's suggested and then we've also got the i think there's a premier cruise in this one the prestige brute sorry prestige brute and then we've got the, the, the vintage, um, the kind of Spumante from Italy. So first of all, we're popping over to Germany. Oliver's going to do the pop. Delightful. Do you remember what this one is in the middle? I did write it down, but it's on my phone, which I don't have on me. No problem. I think it was a gold. You think it was a gold? Okay, we'll, we'll double confirm that it was a gold. What about this one here? Well, that one's on the bottle. Right? That one's on the bottle over there, so I'm going to have to... No, I'm not going to... Gastronomic. Oh, is it? Okay, gastronomic. There we go. We become fully prepared for these videos. So, gold gastronomic. So, here we're going to go for the rising, first of all. And typical kind of silky, yellow fruit, freshly cut grass petroleum aromas, a nice warm golden colouring as well to the wine. Very silky, very smooth, almost creamy kind of aroma. Hmm. I've just got a touch of fizz on this head, so I'm going to pour a, a drop more just to get those flavours going. Hmm. Again, a dry, initial dry, very fruit-driven citrus burst that quickly turns into a silky texture in the palate. Green fruits, grass again, freshly cut grass, petroleum. It's very, very, very smooth, very, yeah. very smooth. Yeah. Citrus in mid-length, mouth-watering minerals as we're coming towards the close. Certainly very, very Moorish. And I thought what we could do then is Let's give this Riesling a, a, a pairing against all of these foods that we've got. So, what have we got here? We was given, with regards to the, the crab meat, is the Russian Red King crab meat. So, th this arrived in the, in the post, a very well packaged parcel. Everything chilled to perfection when it arrives. Also, we've got the Tsar cut smoked salmon with red beet, and that is a, a wonderful piece of meat that they sent us again. Everything's superbly packaged. You really feel you're in for a treat when this yeah. parcel arrives. You really do. And then obviously we, we've got their, their, their tin and their, and their tin of the, 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 the smoked um, pike eggs, the, the roe as such. So let's try, let's go with the crab. We're going to try with the crab. And they also sent us a, a pack of blini. So we've got a lovely base to, to, to the kind of canapes we've got here. And with the crab, I've done a very light mayonnaise uh, and Dijon mustard sauce, not too strong or too hot, but just to give it that little bit of a kind of the um, creamy style to it, yeah. so it's not too dry. So here we go. Mm -hmm. mm. Works very well because both the the crab meat, along with the sauce and even the blini to the, to the base to the degree, marry up perfectly well with the creamy texture, the silky texture of the wine. These two work very good, they harmonise together. You still get the delightful hints of green fruits from the wine, 
but certainly the, the meaty, the savoury flavours, a silky savoury flavour comes through. Towards the end I get the, the expression from the mayonnaise and the mustard slightly, but it's a really, it's a relaxing kind of pairing, definitely. Yeah, I agree. There's also sort of like a subtle sort of creaminess from the sauce. There is a creaminess. It's, I think creamy, silky yeah. is certainly the memorable, memorable kind of um, tasting notes that I'd get from this pairing here. So the next one we're going to try, what should we try? Let's try the, the let's go for the salmon. The salmon. This looks so the good. The lovely piece of meat and it just cut beautifully well. Oh, this is incredible. It really does look the part. Not as good a pairing, funny enough, as the crab. This time, it the, the, the wine overtakes slightly the, the beginning part. Green fruit, citrus. You've lost the, the wonderful, silky, almost melt in the mouth sensation from the from the smoked salmon. Towards the end, the salmon's attacking back. You're getting the oily kind of texture, flavors. I think. Not as good as the first pairing for me. No, it's, it's not. It's not working in harmony. Like no, the first one did. But that that meat was incredible. Mm -hmm. Really was uh, privileged to taste. To be honest with you. Now the last bit we're going to do. So we're going to try the smoked, smoked pike roes. I find a bit of a tongue twister actually. Um, and we can either have that with the, the base, the blini base, or lightly kind of toasted bread. So it's up to you which one you'd like to try. You can pick what you want there. They've got, I've got very lightly toasted bread and a little bit stronger, should we say, darker toasted bread. I'm gonna go for the bellini. You're gonna go for the safe option. I'm gonna go for a little bit of the toast here. So let's go for that. There we go. Looks really good. Yeah, good idea, good idea. So. Hmm. Not bad. Obviously, the, the toast works very well with, with the row there, wonderfully well. But the salty element, this comes in and takes away that saltiness. It leaves like a dry green lime expression. And then towards the end, I'm getting the toast. It's a little bit different from you. I'm getting the toast and, and the, the row um, coming towards the end. It's a touch clashy, but it's not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty much the same, just without the toast, it was, it was strong, the sparkling wine at the start, and at the very end, you, you got the row. You got the row, yeah. Really nice, the row, very nice, very delicate in, in that pot. Um, fantastic first start to this tasting. Let's go across from Germany down to Italy, and we're going to try the Fenaroli. So this is t the, the 12 months, the Fenaroli 12 months, the 2017 vintage. So this is a vino spumante, so it's sparkling wine from Italy. I'm not going to waste the Lotzenbacher there, I'm just going to try that last bit. That is very nice from Lotzenbacher. And then we're going to repeat the tasting again. So we do the crab, we do the, the, the smoked salmon with the beet, and then we finish off with this smoked pike row after. There goes another pop. Do we love that sound or what? There we go, lovely. Oliver's going to pour his away. He's doing a professional job. Although he's got another glass down there, really. That's where he's pouring it into. <laughs> Hmm, okay, let's just see. Another kind of warm golden yellow colouring to the wine, a nice deeper tone of yellow. Once again, a creamy, yellow floral, creamy uh, uh, aroma initially. I've got fruits in there, I'm trying to just work out what those fruits are. 
certainly creamy is, is a wonderful expression of it. So creamy, probably yellow stone fruits, very ripe yellow stone fruits, apricots, um, not so acidic, more smooth style on the nose. So we're going to try the flavours of the Fenroli. Really good. Good expression, light expression of yellow fruits. You've got the blossom, yellow blossom in there. Edging towards honey. There's a touch of honey in there. Touch of citrus. Citrus. Good citrus burn. Very mouth refreshing flavour. Mm. Definitely the citrus on there, yeah. We've got that citrus attack. But very young tasting. Mm -hmm. Very alive with flavours. I'll have a top up as well as we're going to do the tasting. Pairing. Smooth. It's acidic but not too acidic, not in the palate, but it does cleanse the palate, so really nice. And we're going to do the operation again. So we're going to start off with the crab. Once again, a nice combination. Not as smooth as the Motzenbacher on the first uh, pairing we did, but nonetheless a nice initial burst of yellow fruits on the pairing. You really feel it's cleansed the palate. It allows a little bit of the crab to show, but once again the, the, the creamy mayonnaise with a hint of Dijon mustard in there comes through towards the end. Well, there's a good length, there's a good savoury close to, to the pairing. Yeah, it's another good pairing. It, it sort of, for me, fades in mid length, leaving mm. the crab flavours and the, the, uh, the sauce, creamy sauce. But I it's a very nice pairing. Yeah, a, a good, a very good combination there. And we're going to try the, the smoked salmon now. So let's go for the second one. Again, these are lovely, really hard to show from a distance, but really lovely pieces of meat. Really heaven, heaven, heavenly flavours. So you've got the meat in the palate, then the wine comes in with that citrus burst. So totally cleansing that palate, um, but the, the meat is defining itself towards the close. So you're getting that smoked salmon hit at the close, the silky, oily texture, not greasy, the palate's cleansed, but that oily, silky texture of the salmon towards the close. Nice pairing. Yeah, citrus, I'd say yellow fruits. Yeah. And dare I say even a touch of honey. You got honey? Well, that's interesting. I didn't get the honey. No. Everybody's palate's different, that's the beauty of it. But I did like that. I'm gonna pour a little bit more in, just for the last pairing here. Now this one's gonna be this the salty kind of attack. Do you wanna try one with toast? And I'm gonna try yeah. one with the the um, blini. Let's try some of this in here. Mm. Mm. It's quite strange, and although there's a touch of saltiness from the from the row there. It actually saltiness increases when you pair it with the wine. So all of a sudden you have a citrus sea breeze kind of uh, salty expression in the palate for the until mid length where the row comes in, uh, this this the smoked row comes in play, and again yeah, there's a, the fish, the savoury flavours towards the close. An okay pairing. The wine adds a touch to to the pairing. Not fantastic in my mind. Um, let's give or take it on that one. I get what you say with the toast, and that mm. it's, it is good, good together. Yeah. For me, it was it was salty citrus all the way through. Salty citrus, but I, I do prefer the toast as opposed to the blini base with the rope okay. for me. But 
pike, smoked pike row, lovely. So I'm gonna to have to do the same as all this time around. So the, the Petrosian selection here is really incredible. Do, if you can treat yourself, if you're very fortunate enough to be able to treat yourself to this parcel of, of foods, and if you've got one or two guests and a wonderful a bottle of sparkling wine ideally, then you're really going to be in for a kind of tasting gastronomic delights with, with this. It really, we cannot share with you the flavours, it's, it's incredible. No, I mean, yeah, this is... It's way above super supermarket level. Oh yes, yes, yes. It's not something you're going to get on the shelf at your local store. So here, I really want to taste this. I tasted this a few years ago. This this celebrity champagne. Is it my? Is it called My Girl? No, Selection Abel. Okay, but I tasted this a few years ago, and I was very much wowed by it. And I thought, oh, that's different. And then I looked into it and I looked at the back and thought, this doesn't come from France or the UK, and it's Taiwan. And it does sell quite, uh, they do sell quite a lot over in Taiwan, because on social media, we see the bottles. So if you check their kind of hashtag, you see people serving it in, in Taiwan. So um, it goes from the Champagne region all the way over to the other side of the world to, to pleasure the people of Taiwan. So, yeah. And today, sure. it's in England. Sorry, Lon. Yeah. It is in England, and it's a gold medal in the gastronomic in the Glass of Lovely Awards 2019. Right. So the judges bought highly of it. Yeah, yeah, I think it had a silver on, in the 2017, mm -hmm. and then it's obviously, I think that was the first year that they released this wine, and then after that, 2019, it edged up to a gold, and I think that's when I tasted it. And funny enough, 2017, I think the year that they started, and these guys here, um, I don't think he's put it on here, but but I'm sure it's 101 years old, so 1920 was when this brand was created, so there's a lot of history with regards to what they do. Back to the champagne. Well, ooh, 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 ooh. This is what I remembered of it. This is good. You've got pastry, you've got citrus, you've got a touch of honey, you've got yellow blossom in there. It is very silky smooth. It is creamy on the nose. Oh, yes, it, isn't it just? Or is it just me? Am I getting carried away? No, no, it's, <laughs> it's, it's a lovely, silky, smooth, it's good, mm. champagne aroma. Again, similar colour to the others. Probably the knots and back had the darker tone of yellow. And each time we've opened a bottle, they've got lighter and lighter. But still a nice hint of the yellowness on there, the golden honey colour. Well, the nose is that good. I'm still attracted by the nose, but we're going to have to go on to the flavours. Same again. I'm going to pour some more in just so I'm going to get some bubbles. Because I've given it too many swirls. Same again, a nice dry initial attack. Citrus, brioche is in there. Hints of toastiness, got an oak character. And then we're mellowing out. The, the dryness is fading away. It's allowing some yellow fruits to come through. More of a honey kind of base. Pastry, shortbread, maybe we've got pastry, flaky pastry as yeah. well. And then that's when it just fades away on those kind of notes. Really, really good. That's a, a very good example of what a champagne should be. Yeah, it's got all the flavours you want from a champagne with a little silky touch to it. A silky touch to it, as Oliver says. And celebrity champagne. Whether or not this is the champagne for celebrities, maybe from the people that we know, sometimes there's some celebrities that do watch what we do. Maybe we should try it with them and see what they think, whether or not this is a celebrity champagne, I don't know. But nonetheless, this Celebrities & Co is over in Taiwan. So if you're on the island of Taiwan, um, try and find a few bars. And I know uh, there's quite a few uh, places that do serve champagne. And I'm quite sure that you could find this in, in the fridge if you ask your sommelier. So now we're going to go to the pairing, aren't we? So we're going to do the crab first. Mm. 
What do you think? I'm going to let Oliver do this one. I think I talk too much. It was a lovely, lovely creamy burst, both from the, the sauce and the champagne. I'm getting the yellow, yellow fruits and then a touch, a touch of like a toasty oaky. Very oh, toasty. Certainly got the oaky character of the champagne, definitely, yeah, I'll agree with that. I would say for me, the champagne came into effect initially, but very quickly the crab took over and the texture of the crab, the, the savoury flavours along with that sauce that we put together took over. So the initial bit, good burst champagne and then the savoury flavours are still there. But towards the end, I'm just tasting this now just after we've done the, the crab. It's a nice, I tell you what, the, the dish is very silky creamy and then this after you finish that this just adds to it. It's just a, a, a silky, creamy display. So we've done well with this champagne, pairing it with. So I'm just going to put a little bit more champagne in there. Do forgive me. Just get the bubbles going. If you need some in yours, do so. He's going to. Right, let's try the, the smoked salmon. from the champagne initially, a dry citrus pushing at the back of the palate. But the the base, the, the blini base, along with the salmon, is in mid-length. It's coming back at you. So this has done its, its job initially to refresh, but there's too much to this to the, the fish, to the smoked salmon, that it really wants to show itself in the palate. So it's continuing on and on. I've lost the champagne flavours and I'm just dealing with the silky texture of the meat. For me, yeah, the, uh, the champagne came in strong at the beginning, then went pretty quickly, but it left an oaky undertone to, this, to the salmon and mm. yeah. Yeah, and possibly. The, That's good. The crepe. So it, it remained, remained with the salmon for me, so just okay. not in a strong Not in a strong way, but you've got the oaky element too, I know what you're saying. Yeah with the dish. But it's quite strong, it's, it's very, it's very, very nice. So let's go for the last one, which is the row. I'm going to once again do it with the toast. I'm going to do it with the crepe. Okay. The bellini base, all I was doing, and I'm going to try the toast. I'll just try this. works the best for me for this champagne. It's a nice combination of citrus, minerals, mm -hmm. yellow fruits but on the dry side with the toast. So I've got the toast obviously but that's not from the wine, this is from the actual toast itself. And the, the, the kind of the salty, savoury flavours. They've combined well to deliver one strong flavour all the way through. Even now I can taste citrus and minerals style from wine and then I can segregate the the row flavours and the toastiness and that's still continuing. That's a very nice balance. That that the champagne from Celebrity and Co and the the, the Petrosian the, the row really really good. I did like that. Yeah I mean basically the same just so you get as so you get as strong of a toasty no toasty yeah that I think that does help actually. I think with the toastiness, it gives a better, it delivers the flavour better. But that's my personal opinion, because everybody's choice, obviously. So there we go. So we've done the, the, the three sparkling wines, uh, Germany, Italy and France, with a wonderful spread from Petrosian, the, the salmon, the crab and the roe. Um, for me, I would say the last pairing I did, which was with the celebrities uh, champagne, celebrities and co, with the roe was very, very good. But 
I'm still very much wowed by a first tasting, which was with the Mons and Becker rice tin and the crab. Yeah, I was going to say that. That was, yeah. that was the one that stood out the most for me. So I think those two on merit, but the consistency from the Fenderoli, the Spumanti, the Venus Spumanti from Italy, was it just ticked the boxes as well all the way through. So very good, three award-winning sparkling wines from Glass of Bubbly, and some wonderful fish delights from the guys, and you can't see it here, Petrosian. Do check their website because you're just going to fall in love with their products and you're going to be ordering all day long. But nonetheless, that's it from me and all of us. So until next time, enjoy the fizz.